Hey everybody, Austin here. Uh, gonna do another trade recap today. Uh, but before I do, I wanna say I'm not licensed or registered, I'm not a financial advisor, and none of this should be taken as investment advice, even if it sounds like it. Okay, so the, the trade I'm gonna be going over today is kind of like a multifaceted uh, uh, analysis of the, like the three day move that it had. Uh, you know, I'm gonna go over all three days of the move because I traded it pretty much all three of the big days. Um, and so yeah, let's get to it. So day one, we had a, it was the big mover, right? It was the it was the mover that ignited kind of like the the excitement in lo in longs again. And I got a nice long out of it out of the open. And then I kind of got caught in this short. Yeah, I bought it over here, sold it up here, and then started shorting it up here, and you know got caught in this grind. Um, it's been a while since I got caught in a short grind, but I I got caught in it. Um, then I tried to long it and failed, and then. I got a little recovery short over here and fast forward over here. Um, uh, it, we had a midday reclaim, which is kind of like my favorite kind of setups, uh, mid-morning, midday reclaims of uh, for longs. These are like the best. You know, then we had this other push right here, this epic stuff, and, and I attempted it here too, um, but didn't uh, that didn't come, and then I kind of just gave up on it the rest of the day. I came back and I saw it at nine, and I was like, no way, no way. So anyway, uh, this was my first trade on it. Uh, just oh, sorry, that one's not it. What if that one it? Yeah, this one's it. Okay, so yeah, like you can see, I bought it up here. It's kind of messy actually. Bought it here, uh, sold it here. Um, you know, buys and sells here. Then I tried to short it and got caught. See the cover up here, and then I put it back on, and then eventually got caught just shorting it. Right? Yeah, I think. Um, this was a long and these are all shorts. These are all shorts and, and I'm just covering, covering, covering because I'm just getting caught in the grind. And right, What saved me here is that um, I have a rule when I'm shorting front side, I don't allow myself to go more than half. And that pretty much saved me here. You know, like I, I tried to recycle here, got stopped out at the high of the day because maybe it was gonna rip. It's It kind of stuffed so I re-put the short back on and you can see now I'm giving it a little bit more patience, trying to play off 350 idea. And so you can see I tried to add here at 350. Stock said we're not stopping, so I you know I cut it again. And then I have a new idea. I say, well, maybe 350 is not the top, then four might be the top. So I start scaling in a little under four, just in case four is gonna be the top, and I try to go a little bit over four and just in case it's gonna stuff. I just get, you know, I just get you know blown out of the water by the strength, so I just cut it. Um, nothing too bad, nothing that keeps me from trading it throughout the rest of the day, right? That used to be my biggest mistake is I would um, fight a stock too early in the morning and then be just wrecked P&L and emotional wise and I can't trade it. I said, hey, uh, the front side short rule saved me. Never go more than half on the front side. Uh, that's, my, I guess, my golden rule. Don't ever let myself be more than half until the trade starts to work and then I can put the rest of the, my size on or maybe even decide it's worth more size with when I have a fixed set risk that I'm in love with. Right? When it's just surging, there's no fixed risk I'm in love with. I'm just playing with 350, I'm playing with four. You know? So then I decide, wow, this is really strong. Maybe it's gonna be the one, right? It's gonna be the one. And good thing to note, right? CEI, this is a recent reverse split and a PR. Um, the next day. This is a very classic setup. Normally not the next day. Normally um, a stock over split in the course of the next week sometime they'll PR and then it'll go nuts, right? A lot of times they try to go nuts on the first day and they normally fail because uh, there's no PR attached. But you know a reverse split and then the PR comes a couple days later and that's when you normally see the excitement. And so this was kind of one of that classic play. The I, call, I don't know, I call it a reverse split and PR play. But anyway, so I was like, I was starting to get really excited. Like this might be the one, the one that could just, it already broke range expectations. I don't think anyone expected this at 250 to go to five, but it totally just expected, uh, broke the range, broke my range expectations for sure. Um, and so I'm like, it could do it again. If it did it once, it could do it again. So I start to get long bias on the trade, but I know I'm a little high up here. So I, I ditch it, willing to rebuy. And right over here, I'm like, okay, I'm getting really excited actually to be honest. I'm getting really excited over here. I'm thinking it's really gonna go over 450. I buy for the 450 break and 450 stuffs and I ditch the trade right away. Um, Cause I'm like, that's not good, right? If when trade when something that should happen doesn't happen, well, 
it should have went up here, I felt, and when it didn't, I thought, okay, all the people like me that just bought are totally bailing, so I need to bail fast. So I did bail, and then I got a quick short out of it with some covers down here. Uh, just a little technical breakdown short. I wasn't swinging for the fences, um, you know, because I still eventually want to long it. And then so I think I got one more trade on it on the, on the first day in here. Oh, no, yeah, so, and then, yeah, is this it? Yeah. So then I get the trade I want out of it, right? I get my favorite setup, right? I get the, the, the reclaim setup. So I notice that we're starting to base here at 350, which on the last chart, you'll notice, oops, that's the same one. On the first chart, you notice it's kind of like the high of this consolidation here, right? 350 is the high of the consolidation. So... I notice that we're holding 350. It's a hold. It's a hole and a half dollar number. It happens to be the top of the morning, so I was kind of excited about this hold. You know, the strong perk and then this higher low here, especially with this kind of big red candle, but still a hold. I really like that. So I decided to put on a little bit, just using my bias. I have a long bias on the stock at this point, and um, using the pre-made channel just to get a nice quick scalp out of it. I wasn't going to throw that money away. I saw an opportunity to make a, a scalp trade, so I took it. We make another higher low here, and we, we're holding VWAP. That's pretty cool. It's not, you know, I don't use VWAP as a, you know, a god rule, but it's more of a guideline. So I'm, I notice that we're trying to tank VWAP here. It's, it's concurrently making a higher low, right? It's making a higher low, um, and it's making a higher low with the morning, too. If you drew a bigger time, a bigger uh, time frame trend line, it's making a higher low from the morning. So it's keeping trend, and this is what I fall in love with, the domino effect, right? I talk about this in a lot in my videos, right? So we break over here, 390, we can get to four, which in step can get us up to this 425 breakdown level. You know, like all of this can bang, bang, bang in one candle, two candles, that's kind of what happened. So I bought here and added, took some profit right over here at this resistance. Um, you know, one can say that I could have added up here, but I had a nice average. I, I wanted to protect it. I, might, I was considering adding more around four. I didn't get it. So anyway, I just kept with the size I had. I took some more off here, and I tried to leave some room for higher. But, you know, we're, we're, you know my idea for the trade was to get over these covers. And, I, you know, ideally these covers kind of in the same blow. This uh, stop loss area at five and the stop loss area at around 460. I kind of wanted that to erupt. So, um, I, you know, when I feel like I'm running out of covers to sell into, that's the only reason why I'm in the trade, right? Um, uh, I, I end up selling it here, and this is actually, this isn't a buy. This is, I, I oversold my long position and had a, you know, small short position that I quickly had to cover because I didn't want to be short. Anyway, but then we come back over, and I'm like, oh, well, maybe this is the time we're going to break five. You know, psychological hole number five right um it's it's proving that it's strong everybody under here is now underwater so i'm like why not just keep you know if it's working keep going so i put an ad on here and this is very important i'm very aware that this is a potential stuffing area so like i immediately have pro i immediately was able to take some off right above five um as intended but then you know i can't show this because it's not a live trade but this was fast I don't know if you were uh, watching this trade at CEI, but it, this push here on five was fast. It was just so fast. And um, I just, you know, the second it stuffed, I was like, I, I need to get out because that's not what I wanted, right? That's nowhere near what I wanted. I knew it could stuff, and I knew if it did stuff, I had to get out. I hated that it stuffed, but I got out, you know, like, and good thing I did because if not, I would have been selling down here in the 40s, right? So that was day one. I, I left it alone for the rest of the day, and because um, you know after that big stuff, it kind of spooked me out from the long, and and I had already recovered the day uh, from the morning, and I was happy with just calling it quits and you know calling it you know you know fair trade CEI. But anyway, then all that happened, and so then I was really excited for day two, right? Day two came along, and now. Um, day two came along and <coughs> we're gapping down big time, right? And so this is a, this is a, I almost like day twos better than day ones because um, the setups for day twos are very defined, right? You know what to do if it gaps down. 
and you know what to do if it gaps up. I prefer day two so much better because there's you get a, I, I, in my opinion, I get a better read on the stock. So we're gapping down. That's a big sign of weakness. I feel like anybody, all of the shorts potentially all, already got squeezed, and there's definitely a lot of longs now underwater. All right, people thinking that it's going to gap up and, and, and go and rip. So, like, I noticed 650 here is the level that I'm, 6, 660 here was the level that um, it had kind of topped out on uh, pre-market. So, what I start to do is I start to think maybe this is the top, right? We double top here and I'm thinking I can, this, I can easily see this gapping and crapping, right? Or gap down and just total fail. So that's what I that's what I trade for. My idea is based off this 650 to 660 level, but I'm willing to um, start early when when um, we start failing. I'm, I'm willing to start sizing in early when we start failing up here. So this was my day two trade on it. Um, you can see I started I started in pre-market thinking if it's gonna fail, I want to be a part of it at least small. Um, nothing I'm convicted to obviously, but like pre-market's pretty illiquid, so. I'm, I'm trying to, I guess, anticipate a little bit, but it's not something I'm super, super convicted in as far as size is concerned. So, you know, I try over here, I stop out, you know, I get back in when we start to top out here. Um, we're going into the open, and I'm not stoked that we're not tanking, but um, I decided to put a little bit more risk on because um, the tape seems pretty, pretty erratic, but, you know, like, stu it's stuffing but not going anywhere, so... I decided to, that like maybe maybe this maybe this range the 650 range 650 660 is gonna work, so I put on a little bit more. Um, I'm still half size at this time, um, and then this this big push kind of scares me. But I, I'm willing to stick to my 650 660 risk on the trade. I'm willing to put on an add up here, one last add at like 650 or 60, and that's gonna be like the rest of my trade. I'm gonna call it quits if it just like a, you know a quick add right near the resistance and if the resistance breaks I'm totally cutting it so I let this I let this rip happen and when it starts to stall I attack you know when it starts to stall and like when we break over the prior high of day here and we don't keep going I see that as kind of a big sign that the stocks heavy the stocks tired it's time like we can definitely roll so I, I I decide to move the orders down and now fix my risk to this high a day now that's basically what I do is I had a 650 60 area risk but the second we stall and and and, and short out here I kind of just decide to move the orders down and I and I change my risk to the new high a day so that's what I did um, I decided to take a little bit of profit right here just in case low a day and pre-market lows wanted to hold um, it didn't thank God it didn't I was able to get some nice covers recycled it back and uh, covered here and I left a small piece on as I am trying to do a lot better on I'm trying to leave a small piece on I didn't get like the 75 covers that I wanted um, or the 50 covers that I wanted um, so I, I'm, I'm holding out for lower I want to cover at like 450 or 40 but we, we grind up we're starting to get past the first hour we get this huge slam and the huge slam is enough for me to take the rest off so this is where I end my trade on day two um, it did end up going lower. Um, you know, if I would have been a little bit more patient with it, I could have got better covers. I'm happy with taking the trade off here, though. You know, I, I was happy with that. Like, this is this is the trade I wanted. This was the meat of the move. This is the part that I could anticipate. What happens later? One, I don't have the pa I don't have the you know that much patience for this. And two, I don't think it's as probable as this. I think this is the probable. This is the the meat move that I want and this is the kind of the bones where maybe you can leave a portion on for this but like for me this can come back you know like what if this catches a bid you know it's middle of the day I, I want to be out so that was day two and today I had a trade on it oh sorry day three day three it was kind of dead so I didn't even touch it but day four um, day four I guess we got a nice pop today and I took advantage of today. So uh, today we were really spiking hard today, right? Like this just came out of nowhere and just accelerated and huge. And so what I did isn't, I guess, the proudest move, but I'm not too ashamed of it just because I was kind of buying on momentum. So basically what I did was um, the stock was just grinding, grinding, and it was holding a trend. It was holding a steep trend, and I was very aware I had a tight risk on the trade the whole time. But I decided to buy once this didn't break down and, and it looked like it was holding trend again I thought maybe we could break through five and keep going 
and we did, but it just didn't, we didn't, like, I wanted it higher, I was hoping we were going to go all the way to six. I was wrong, and, like, I was able to take some off here, and I, you know, I bailed on the rest of the position when it failed. And so here, I actually get short. Uh, here is when I actually get short, and this sucks, right? This totally sucks, because I get short, and then I end up covering right here, right before the tank, and then the cover that I had, the stupid cover that I had, like I, I didn't clean house, right? So I had a cover down here that I had to quickly sell, but then I decided to rebuy it, right? I decided to rebuy it because I'm like, this is such a drastic tank. Um, I, I'm figuring that this could maybe trap because of what SGBX did today. SGBX kind of did a similar stuff move and totally failed, and I'm like, well, maybe people see that and think the same thing's gonna happen. CEI was easy to borrow, so that was going through my mind. So I'm like, maybe this can totally squeeze back. And I'm, and so here I start building a long position here, and I sit, I sell a little bit here, but I'm like, no, this is going higher. So I rebuy it here. I start selling somewhere here around the VWAP area. I'm still holding, at you know, more than half of the position, and I'm, I'm really waiting for the big home run trade, right? Kind of a, I maybe a little break of discipline where I should have taken off, like, a third. Well, I did take off a third. I, like, you know, I guess in hindsight, maybe I'm only letting hindsight dictate my analysis, but in hindsight, I should have taken another third off, but I wanted like another third up here and then saving another third for above high a day. Like I was really going for the guts of trade and it didn't work, so I had to sell. Um, and one thing I noticed was that right over here, when this trend broke is when the, sh the nice short play came. And this is a very classic setup. I call it the overextended trend break, which is why I got short. And um, so when I saw this trend break and that was so nice, I was like, okay, well maybe it's gonna happen the same thing. I saw this trend and when I saw this trend break, I loaded up short here and I was able to get a nice end of day profit. End, end of day, two, you know, 2.30 p.m. Um, over, you know, overextended um, trend break kind of crack, right? So that was my trade on it today. Uh, the SSR made this trade kind of different. That's why you see a whole bunch of arrows over here. Normally there's only a couple, I guess. Like, um, But yeah, SSR made it really tough to fill here, so that's what that's all about. Um, but yeah, that was the um, that was my trades on CEI over the last week. Um, I don't think I have anything else to go over except, you know, like, um, I guess maybe the, the key element is just the trend break, right? Trend breaks, trend breaks make it so simple. Like if you can just like stocks will always follow the trend like most of the time, and we always try to make things more complicated. If you just stick to the trend, you know, stick to the trend. Like this is a steeper trend than this, but when the trend breaks, it's over. When the trend breaks, it's over, right? Like maybe like I almost want to just only do this setup from from now on. It's a lot easier, even though we don't get them as often, but. Anyway, that was my trades on CEI. If you have any questions on my mentality, your thought process, please feel free to, to, to question. Uh, have a great day. Aloha.